Imagine sailing along the Pacific Ocean. Imagine the serenity, the beauty, the pollution. You heard me right. There is a part of the Pacific Ocean that has become the Earth's toilet bowl. It's an unbelievable sight to behold. And our Carolyn Jarvis tonight takes you there. There's a brush. This is a bottle and a bottle cap. Toys. Here's a brand name for you, a Reese's uh, peanut butter cup. Garbage, garbage, and more garbage. Starbucks, Budweiser, McDonald's. This will break into little pieces, but it will never go away. Plastic littering the Pacific shoreline. But where does it end up? Well, that may shock you. Millions of pieces of it are churning in a massive vortex called the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. It's been described as the Earth's toilet bowl, and it's the subject of a documentary by Toronto filmmaker Ian Conacher. We're headed out to the North Pacific Central Gyre, the Eastern Garbage Patch, as it's called. Conacher was so horrified by the trash piling up in our oceans that he quit his job and traveled into the middle of the Pacific to capture it on film. In my mind, I had an image of a floating landfill out here. But it's not that. It's a chunk here, a piece there. But when you do it for an hour and realize just how small the section is you're able to search and the fact that only half of all plastics float, you begin to get a sense of just how much plastic must be out here. And as tour guide into this polluted mess, Captain Charles Moore, who in 1997, after finishing a yacht race to Hawaii, took a shortcut back to Los Angeles. He was expecting nothing but serenity and smooth seas. Instead, he noticed a strange and disturbing phenomenon. I thought, something is drastically wrong here. This is just a tiny little track we're passing through the ocean, and we're seeing trash every single day. What Captain Moore was sailing through was a swirling current of ocean waters that acts like a toilet bowl, collecting garbage from the ocean edges and trapping it in the middle. No one dumps the trash here. It's either carried out by the rivers or picked up from the shore. But because of how much trash people have carelessly discarded over the years, the garbage patch has grown exponentially and is now estimated to be twice the size of Texas. That's right, twice the size of the Lone Star State. When I realized that the ocean had become a plastic soup when we put so much trash in it that it's now mixed into the point to where we can never get it out, I became uh, upset, alarmed, and really kind of depressed. Captain Moore has returned many times over the years, trying to figure out the scope of the problem, and it only gets more disturbing. I personally collected paint rollers, uh, plastic bottles, wrappers. Uh, I found a fluorescent light tube, uh, tons of fishing floats and fishing nets. You name it. What you see is a plastic bottle. This is easily 4,000 miles from the, the Asian coast. We captured uh, many of these lanternfish at the surface. And in opening up these fish and looking at their stomachs, uh, we found as many as 83 pieces of plastic in one little two and a half inch long fish. And the numbers say that 80% of the debris comes from land and only 20% comes from the fishing industry. And really that is as simple as, you know, somebody dropping a wrapper and it getting into the wind. Uh, getting into the river, and then eventually it'll reach the ocean. Everything will reach the ocean. But the trash doesn't just sit on the surface. It breaks down, floating throughout the depths of the ocean, and that's where the problem unfolds. We're going to use this to calculate the ratio of uh, plastic to plankton by weight, which is the way that we compare the available food to the amount of plastic that's in the sample. In this one, I think we're going to find that the ratio is greater than 10 to 1 of... Uh, plastic to plankton. Ten times more plastic than naturally occurring food. Disgusting. Marine oceanographer Yevgeny Pakamov. Average destruction time when the plastic would be degraded or destructed is anything between 30 to about 450 years. 450? 450 years. So literally we can say every single piece of plastic is if it hasn't been burned or recycled is ex does exist somewhere in landfill, in the ocean. And so fish are mistaking the plastic for food and eating this toxic soup. Sea turtles eat plastics, uh, plastic bags because they mistake them for jellyfish. 
and jellyfish, their main food source. Perhaps most startling are the images of birds whose stomachs are filled with our trash. What you see in here is basically it's a, a bottle cap, to some might have been a shampoo bottle or something of that nature, another bottle cap. This looks like an electric uh, wire plug. At some point, species will begin to crash. If we're feeding 83 pieces of plastic to a two and a half inch long fish, it's not going to survive long to reproduce. And that species is in danger. And so the math is simple. The fish eat the plastic, the birds eat the plastic, and we eat the fish and the birds. It all means we're eating plastic. Literally, the tuna in your sandwich or the salmon on your plate um, can be contaminated through this chain of events. Studies have now linked the toxicity in plastic to hormonal changes in humans, says Bill Wareham with the David Suzuki Foundation. We've seen uh, a decrease in the age of uh, women maturing. We've seen uh, in some of the studies a decline in the production of sperm in males. And this isn't just in a few places, this is a global phenomenon that's happening. And over the last 40 years, these trends are going the wrong way. The hard reality is that unless we change our habits, the problem is only going to get worse. Estimates have it the garbage patch will double in size in the next decade. And it's not a happy story because we can't go out and clean it up. We're talking an area the size roughly of Western Europe. It's two miles deep. You'd have to sieve the entire ocean and kill everything in it to get the plastic out. And so people like Ian and Captain Moore are doing everything they can to raise awareness in hopes of reversing the trend because the alternative is too difficult to fathom. I have to believe we can fix it. I wouldn't get out of bed in the morning if I, uh, if I believe we couldn't.